Hi, it's Davina, and we're back to sewing. I just wanted to let all of you know that I had a wonderful opportunity because of the Arts Commission in Ellensburg, uh, they were doing a grant to help support artists and creators who, because of the pandemic, have not been able to do their usual work. In the spring, I had four sewing classes canceled. They were going to be get to know your sewing machine, get to know your pattern, get to know your serger, and uh, a UFO roundup where uh, we worked on unfinished objects. Some of them could have been from the classes or uh, like what I'm showing you today, uh, ones that got started and then collected dust. I'm bringing some of those back uh, thanks to the grant by the Arts Commission. So what I have here is actually not a project of my own. This is someone else's project. They went together, uh, I believe it was a, a granddaughter and her grandmother went together and uh, they went to the fabric store and they found an easy option pattern. And it looks amazing. And they cut it all out. And that's as far as the directions as they could follow it. One thing about easy patterns, if this is your first time sewing, is look at how many pieces it takes to make the thing that you're making. Uh, this, uh, I think, goes up to 13, but actually just for this piece, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces plus interfacing. And oh yeah, there's buttons down the front that you have to match up evenly. So there's uh, a lot of stuff going on with this pattern. And uh, even though for Vogue, it's easier, Vogue tends to be more um, couture upscale sewing. Uh, and if you're going for your first project, I suggest that you go for a shopping bag. Yeah, you know, something that's just squares stitched together and if it ends up a little lumpy, well, that's because it's going to hold potatoes and apples in your groceries instead of, you know, something that has to fit a human form. Now, at some point, you may end up tackling something bigger than you can chew. And the best thing you can do is take it a little bit at a time and try to keep very close track of where you are in the process. Now, luckily, all they have gotten to in the process is cutting things out. So I will be able to figure out from the pieces that they cut out which of these various different styles, A, B, C, D, E, or F, they are going for now. They've decided to go with one of the belt ones because I can see the belt right here. Okay, so I know it's gonna be one of those. They've also chosen the long uh, body on that. So it's gonna be uh, B, D, or F. So now all I need to figure out is, okay, it looks like poofy sleeve. Yes, they've gone for poofy sleeve instead of ruffle sleeve. Okay, so now it's narrowed down uh, a little bit. And I guess I just have to figure out which collar they decided on. I think they are doing D, the one right here. And they've chosen to do it in a plaid instead of a stripe. It's very attractive. So I'm going to uh, continue reading through the instructions and then get back to you on how this is all going to go together. They did an okay job of cutting out these pattern pieces. There's a few that aren't really clearly cut out, um, but they've left enough extra material that I can probably fix that. Um, but one thing I did notice is the front, which should have been cut as two pieces uh, was actually just folded over. And so right now there's not a seam going down the front 
for it to button up with. Well, that's okay because since they did it this way, we're not gonna have a problem with the plaids not matching up. Um, it's gonna be luckily straight across. I'll just slit along this fold with my scissors so that uh, there's two front pieces and one back piece. So that's gonna be good. And the other thing I need to look at is the belt because somehow they cut it out with the pattern piece in the middle of the uh, sash. So I'm gonna unpin this and see what the directions on the piece say. Okay, cut four, okay, they cut four. All right, um, and they did it you know, very nicely on grain following the plaid. So I think this is gonna be okay. There's the possibility that right at the center of the belt, uh, there might be some odd matchup with the plaid. That's the only thing I'm concerned about with this, but um, you know, some things just can't be helped and maybe I can disguise that um, through some interesting seamstress work. Um, we'll see about that, but for the most part, this is gonna be okay and I love that the plaid down the center is gonna match up because they cut them out together folded instead of having, I, I can't stand it when polka dots or stripes or plaids don't match up down the center seam. So I'm a little concerned about the belt having a center seam there, but I think other than that, it's gonna work out just fine. So the instruction sheet has you starting with the front panel and then going on to the back, putting on the uh, shoulders, then going on to the collar, and then the sleeves, and then the cuffs, and then finally the buttons and the belt. But honestly, the belt is the easiest part. So I'm going to start with the construction of the belt. And I didn't realize the belt is actually not just these four pieces, number 12, but number 13 as well. There's sort of a, a stomacher piece. So we don't have to worry about a seam right there in the middle where the plaids don't match up. It's gonna be somewhere here on the sides where the plaid might not match up. So that's gonna be okay. So let's work on the belt first. And that has us putting right sides together and stitching and then flipping it the other way and pressing. So we're gonna be making two of these sort of tie things. They look like wind socks, but there's not a hole at the end. So that's what we're going to stitch up first. Okay, so this plaid isn't woven in. It's actually printed on, so you can definitely see the wrong side and the right side. And the trick is, if I were to stitch these two pieces with the pretty side out and then flip it, you'd end up seeing the ugly side. So I've got to get these ugly sides out, right sides together or pretty sides together, and then stitch them up. In fitting these together, um, they're actually not completely identical. So I have a little bit of fudge work to do to get these straight because uh, some of the pieces are, are just slightly uneven. And how does that happen when you have them all stacked together and you're cutting them all out at once? You know what? Fabric is flexible. <laughs> and uh, tables and scissors are not flexible. So that might happen. But the important thing is when I do the stitching here, I do it straight. And I think what I'm going to do is to prevent uh, fraying, I'm going to stitch it as well as surging the edges. So double lesson using your sewing machine and then also your serger, you can uh, take care of possible fraying. Now it's time to turn it inside out and it's not a complete loop, so I can't do the usual large safety pin trick, but 
it's kind of like a sock. And if you can gather it up, you can flip it around. It's getting that last tip part out. That's the trick. But now you can see the importance of sewing it right sides together and then turning it uh, turning it right side out after you've stitched. Otherwise, you would end up with the ugly sides out. So I'm gonna work on this one, getting the tips nice and straightened out, and then ironing it, and then we can do the middle of the belt. Okay, pretty sides together. Uh, but they have it done this weird way where it's like folded back and forth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch on one, then flip it over, and then stitch on the other. And we want it so that the top pointy part is closest to this center. Now I went ahead and ironed this so that I've got a nice sharp crease there. But we need to make sure that this upper pointy part is at this part because that's the top edge of the center of this belt. Got the belt. Plat doesn't exactly match up here on the sides, but seeing that this is going to be the front panel that's going to be right there at the middle of the stomach, it's not going to look too bad. I managed to get one stripe straight in the middle with that. So now let's start working on the body of the shirt. Now this might take me a couple days because, you know, people have lives. So when you've got a sewing project, it's really nice if you have a table that you can just leave it on. However, not everybody is lucky enough to have that. I recommend that if you've got a nice dining table for doing your sewing on, you get one of these cardboard um, covers for your table. It makes it so that uh, if your table isn't completely smooth, it protects that, it keeps any food blobs that might not have been completely wiped off the table off of your work, and because it folds, you can fold up your sewing project in between working on it. So that now can go off to the side and I can get to it on another day. When after a long hiatus, you decide that you're gonna get back to your sewing project, it's a good idea to, when you unfold it, kind of look back at the directions a little bit and sort out where you're at. What I'm doing here is I'm making sure that I have all of the pieces that I need for both the body and the sleeves. Usually the next simplest thing to do is going to be the sleeves because oftentimes the sleeves will be one piece. However, on this pattern, uh, it's a, a draw between whether I do the body first or the sleeves first. So I just wanted to double check that I had all the parts necessary and I kind of do a, a quick little dry fit, making sure that I have all the seam allowance necessary, that all of the pieces match up, that the plaids match up, uh, so that I can put it together more quickly when I finally get to that. So anytime you take a step away, just make sure that you take your time, come back to it, and look at the instructions one more time before you really get into it. So what I've been doing is I've been serging the outer edge of all the pieces to make sure that they don't fray apart. Because this is printed instead of woven, uh, I can tell that some things are, are gonna be a little bit off grain, so I'm just serging it to make sure that everything's stable. However, I noticed something on the sleeve piece here. This is supposed to be a fold line, and it was instead cut. So I'm gonna do some, um, some changing on how the sleeve is put together. And instead of these super, I'm guessing they're extra long sleeves, was that what was going on? Or, yeah. Um, If the sleeve is up here, this goes that way. Uh, I don't know.
how all that extra material was supposed to be used on this sleeve pattern. So, um, yeah, th it seems a little bit weird that that was supposed to be a fold line, so that this piece should have been double as long and two of them. I'm guessing that they had intended for it to go like this, so that it would be really big and poofy, but on a, on a lot of people's arms, that would be massively weird. So um, I'm gonna switch it around and make it very, very gathered around the arm, and then just have it this long with these wide cuffs that are still there. So uh, yeah, the sleeves are gonna be um, modified to the pieces that I have, because there's no extra fabric for me to reattach more to that. So it's gonna be a little bit of a change, but we can still make it work. Now, if you have a pattern that's asking for pleats, uh, if you're trying this for the first time, you may want to simplify it and instead of having pleats, change it to being gathered. Pleats take uh, a lot of math and a lot of folding of the fabric and making sure that everything ends up even, particularly on a flat. So I'm not going to do this as pleated. I'm going to gather it. Okay, I'm going to do a basting stitch and then draw it tight to gather this because I realized though I could pleat it, um, it'll be a little bit easier if I gather it. And that's what the original pattern had. Hand stitching is time consuming. It just is. There's no way around it. And when you're doing gathers, uh, I really do recommend that you use a thick button thread to help you with this. So you can shift around the fabric and even things out nicely between pieces. This has gathers at the mid arm of the sleeve and at the cuffs, as well as on the back of the shirt. <clears throat> so I'm going to, uh, do that little basting stitch and then draw these up so that they can fit inside the cuffs. I'm not gonna actually stitch the cuffs on in this direction and then flip it around and do some top stitching. But first I've gotta gather up the bottom part of the sleeve. Welcome to the time warp where the sleeves are all put together and now we're working on the body. It also happens to have a yoke on the back section that needs to be gathered. So again, more hand stitching, but we wanna have those gathers centered in the middle. So I kind of flattened everything out and then just in the most center part, that's where I'm doing my gathering and evening things out. So those gathers look as similar to the gathers on the sleeves as I can make them. And then I put things away. All right, so after getting the back all gathered up right there, I then decided to do the shoulder seams. And I decided because of the uh, facing that it had, I would top stitch it down, both at the shoulders for some extra reinforcements, and then down here as well. Uh, and I decided to do it in, instead of white thread like most of the rest of it, I decided to do it in blue so that it would blend in with that and I just decided, you know what? Shoulder seams, I'll do that. So anything stitching that I think is gonna be visible, I'm gonna to continue to do in dark blue. Anything that's gonna be on the inside, I'm gonna keep with the white because I think it looks neater that way. So now, uh, I am not the eventual wearer of this, but when you can still lay things out pretty flat, that's the time to do the collar, in my opinion. Sometimes you'll have a pattern that says something else, but right now, this neck is pretty easy to get to because I can lay out all the pieces flat. As soon as I put on the sleeves and the side seams, this is gonna be three-dimensional. So if this were for me right now, I would throw this on like a medieval tabard and just kind of see how it looked, maybe safety pin it uh, right underneath the arms, which is usually the thickest part of the bust and make sure that everything is working out fine there in the front. But because it's not for me, I'm just gonna have to trust the people that originally cut this out. I'm gonna work on the collar next and then it's gonna be sleeves and side seams.
Collars a little bit tricky. Uh, they come in usually two parts. There's the part that attaches to the shirt, and then there's the lapel part. And you have to stitch it inside out, iron it, flip it, and then iron it again while also making sure that those corners are nice and, uh, and crisp. And it will go inside of this part of the collar, which I need to serge up and then insert this inside, stitch down, right sides out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a piece. So uh, I'm pretty sure that this should have been in the other direction, but there just wasn't enough room on this short edge. But this is the collar, and now, I'm gonna fit it into the neck right here. Now, if I were to just stitch it in straight, it might get off kilter. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta find the middle of the shirt, which might not be with the stripes, and the middle of the collar, which I know is not gonna fall on any of the stripes exactly. So those two pinned together stitching the interior of the collar down, then flipping it and stitching the outer part of the collar around it so it encases this edge. Pinning is super important at this stage. I know sometimes I don't even show myself pinning, but on a collar, you wanna make sure you've got that center back lined up on both the collar piece and the shirt piece. Otherwise, it's gonna always feel lopsided. All right, <clears throat> now that the collar's attached, uh, I have a couple things left to do. Uh, I want to do something with this uh, surged edge so that if the collar is open, that won't show. So it's probably gonna be just a, a bit of uh, binding tape or hem tape along that. Um, I'll put my tag in there. But before that, I'm gonna actually work on the side seams and uh, fitting in the sleeves, the sides are gonna be sewn up and then I'm gonna fit in the sleeves and if I need to do some gathering up at the top shoulder, we'll do that. And then it's buttons and the shirt's done. It's only like 10 steps. Okay, I've got my poofy sleeves gathered at the upper arm and down at the cuff. And now it's time to fit them into the armholes. And this is something that uh, gets a lot of people because you have to think inside out. So, top of the shoulder, to the top of the shoulder here, but I've got to make sure that the sleeve is right side to right side there. So, it's a little bit, you know, of brain work get it right but it's important to make sure that you ease this around because see how it looks like the sleeve has extra well you can carefully ease it around so you don't have any puckers now luckily even if I do have puckers as long as I have them strategically placed they'll just kind of match up with the uh, gathering that I've already done on both the sleeve and in the center back so this one it's not so critical not to have any uh, puckering or gathering, but if I do, I've got to make sure that it's symmetrical. I'm going to try to uh, ease it around so it's nice and smooth and just a little bit by a little bit feed in the extra fabric from the arch of the shoulder into the armhole. But if that uh, becomes quite difficult, it's all right, because as long as I have those uh, gathers up here at the center top, uh, it'll look appropriate which means I'm gonna start under the arm, go up one side, under the arm, go up the other side, and hopefully everything will just match up. All right, we now have a shirt. The sleeves are in. I was able to ease it around on the shoulders with only a little tiny pucker, but it's not very obvious because it's in the dark. So that's good. I got the collar finished and uh, the hem tape on there so that when it's open, it won't be very obvious where the uh, 
raw edges were. I've put in my label. And now all that's left is turning over the hem all the way along the bottom. I've already done part of it here. And then putting on buttons. So let's talk about that. Because this was originally cut on the fold and then just slit down the center, all of these plaid stripes match across the front, which is fantastic. Now, I believe it's totally worth investing in one of these. This is a button spacer and it makes it so basically all of your buttons are fairly consistently spaced. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a pretty good approximation of exact spacing. But this fabric already has a grid to it. So I was looking at the buttons that they have on their version of the shirt, and they don't actually have them going all the way to the top unless uh, you've got it with this sort of mandarin collar. This one here it actually starts a bit further down. So I can put a button up at the top and then maybe on each of these dark stripes until I run out of buttons. Uh, or I could skip the top one. I think I'm going to put it in just so that it's most like this pattern. But we now need to figure out which side goes on top. In Western clothing, men's shirts and women's shirts button differently. Men's shirts have the left side over the right side, but women's shirts have the right side over the left side. Why? Um, I'm sure I'm sure there's some historical reason. So it doesn't really make sense why that is, uh, but uh, it is. Women's have the uh, right over the left, men's left over the right. So I'm going to space out these buttons, put buttonholes on the one that goes on the top, buttons down below on the layer underneath, finish the hem, and then the shirt is done. Oh, and by the way, uh, buttons and buttonholes are different on every single sewing machine. Uh, some of them have a, a single one button thing and it will do buttonholes. I never trust that. Always do it on a practice piece of fabric and adjust it as you go along because you'll have some buttonholes that get larger and smaller for apparently no reason. Uh, if you want to do something easier, I recommend using snaps, particularly the ones that are a quick little uh, grommet that you can either use a punch or hit with a hammer and grommet them in, and it will give you the look of buttons without having to worry about buttonholes and things like that. So that's just my, my opinion. If you can do snaps, do snaps, but this uh, person wanted to do the buttons and I've got the buttons, so I'm going to do with the buttons and buttons holes. I managed to lose some footage here, and it was of the lovely buttonholes and buttons all put together with the shirt laid out and uh, showing it next to the pattern. But uh, I don't know what I did. Did I not turn on my camera properly? Did I accidentally delete a file that shouldn't have gotten deleted? Who knows? So we're going to just jump to it, pre-wrapped up in a Christmas box. Okay, it's time for me to package this up and invoice the client who had cut this out but hadn't been able to stitch it together. Really, all in all, this whole project, uh, after it was cut out by the client, took me about two hours to assemble it. However, I didn't do it all in one. I started off making the belt, and then I went to uh, assembling the back piece and attaching the shoulder seams. Then I assembled the sleeves. Then I attached the sleeves to the garment. Wait, I did the collar first. Then I attached the sleeves to the garment. Then I did the buttons and the hem. So when you're working on this yourself, it's really nice if you can just do one piece and then set it aside. So. Maybe one day you do the belt. For me, it didn't take that long, but if you're a new sewer, it might take you a full hour just to make the belt. That's fine. Make the belt, set it aside. The next day, come back, and then 
do the uh, back assembly and the shoulders. And then fold it up, set it aside. On the next day, make the sleeves, set them aside. On the next day, attach the collar, finish, set it aside. Next day, attach the shoulder seams. That's gonna be frustrating. It's okay, work on it a little bit, get it done, set it aside. At the end, do the buttons and the hem, and that's it. Now, that way you're not trying to tackle the whole project in one day. You could do that, but I don't recommend. You're just taking little pieces at a time. And that way you're not overwhelmed by a whole project. And that's one way of handling when you've got an unfinished object, you just take it little chunk at a time with what you're comfortable with doing. Uh, modifications to make this even simpler, I would not have put on a lapel collar. I would have kept it simple or even not put on a collar at all, but just turned it under and had it an open sort of uh, boat or crew collar. I would have changed the buttons to being snaps, the type that I can just hammer on or use one of those um, crimps to put on. Um, and I would not have chosen a pattern that had a sleeve that comes in three different parts. I would have tried for something that was a single sleeve. So maybe I'd actually do these slightly longer than short sleeve, but not quite three quarter length sleeve. So I would have done the non ruffle style sleeve and just left there. So those are our ways of simplifying a complicated pattern, not doing buttons and buttonholes, changing those to snaps, changing the collar so it's less fancy, doing simpler sleeves or even no sleeves at all. You could totally do this as a uh, sleeveless sort of smock top. So you can take a complicated pattern, make it easier on yourself. You can take it in pieces and just do one part at a time. And eventually you'll get really good at this. Now I have linked below to uh, Evelyn Wood. She's an amazing sewer. She does great videos for beginner sewers. So if, uh, if this was a little bit speed for you, go and watch her videos too. She does a great job. There's tons of other wonderful sewers out there that can show you step-by-step step how to choose your pattern, how to read your pattern, all the tips and tricks that they don't show you on the outside of the envelope that will help you finish up a project. I hope you had a fun time watching this. Have a great day.